Solomon? Yes. <laughs> Dear Solomon, have I got problems? Peculiarly coincidental. As it happens, I have sort of a problem myself. Why, I'm not sure I know how to explain. A fabrication of fancy, a slight of mind, perhaps. Solomon! You're Solomon! You're Solomon, right? Right, on all three accounts. Uh, hey, you look just like I thought you would, you know? Well, of course I do. I'm a figment. A what? A figment. Your figment, to be exact. Oh, you mean a figment of my imagination! I suppose, if you want to be redundant. It's all one and the same, of course. That's what a figment is. Something from your imagination. Huh? You make it sound like a race or something, an Indian, Caucasian, pigment. Quite so. Only a figment has no pigment. Oh, <laughs> that is really corny. Hey, you tell like corny jokes or what? Why not? You love them, don't you? How do you know what I love? Oh my gosh, do you know what I'm thinking? Yes, but go ahead and tell me anyway. No, you know what I'm thinking before I think it. Well, not before you think it, only while you're thinking it. And I should like to write it all down for you. Hey, wait a minute. If you're my thing, then how come you're so proper and all that fancy way you talk and everything? I'm not like that. How come you are? I'm sure I have no idea. Figments, as a rule, don't know much about themselves. Unless, of course, they've been very thoroughly imagined, which, unfortunately, you did not take the time to do. <gasps> oh, part of your arm is missing. Did I do that? Precisely. I don't even know how I got this much of you. I don't know what to do about the rest. Perhaps if you concentrate very hard, it might just appear. You think? Huh? I guess it's worth a try. Oh, how gross. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey! Hey, it worked! Hey, how'd you like another head? Or maybe three arms or something? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. wait. I'd like to get used to what I've got first, all right? Besides, you never can tell. You might get to like just the way I am. Say, so one arm was all right enough, but two was rather uh, marvelous, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, he saw that you're pretty cute, you know? And I think I know why you're so proper and everything, too. You do? Mm -hmm. Well, see, deep inside, I'm very proper myself. I felt it for a long time. <laughs> you know, I should have been a princess back in the 13th century somewhere. A princess with blue blood and all. Instead, I'm stuck here in the boring old last days. <laughs> last days, wouldn't you know it? I just get here now, they're winding everything up. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing with my book? I know I paid a lot of money for that book, so what are you doing to it? I'm me? going to write down everything you say. You are? Mm. What are you doing that for? I might say something I don't want written down. Come now, Elizabeth. What is it you wish to be called? Debbie. All right, then. Come now, then, my no, little Debbie. Make that Deborah Catherine Barrett. <laughs> well, all right, you can shorten it. Deborah C. Barrett. Thank you. <clears throat> Come then, now. Deborah C. Barrett. Isn't that exactly what you want? Someone to record everything you say. And never tell what you know. Yes, I remember. Now then, let's get on with November 1st, shall we? What is this terrible problem you seem to have, Deborah C. Barrett? Well, it's just that Mother won't let me go with Christy and Cheryl to see this R-rated movie. But it's got such fantastic photographer, everybody says. I mean, I just about sold myself into slavery to make her say yes, but she wouldn't budge. Are you really getting all this? I hope you're getting the feeling of it. I mean, the feeling is practically the most important thing. Are you married? Married? Well, do you imagine me to be? No. Yeah, you see? I'm afraid I am subject to the whims of a fickle feminine ego. A 16-year-old one, is that? Oh, 16? Don't even mention that sometimes. I think being 16 is the worst decision I ever made. Oh, I'm doing so much inside and I feel so alone. Oh, sometimes I just wish I didn't have any feelings at all. If you could say or do anything to me and I just wouldn't even care. No feelings, huh? I was just sort of getting used to them, actually. Sometimes when I feel an ache begin within my heart When emotion starts to get me down I believe that I could leave them all and fly away 
knowing that today I have finally found my soul and disillusion. A friend to fly with me as the old familiar sun rises to a close hug around me. Now Solomon, and sweet Solomon, you'll make my life a special one. Listen, I can't stay up all night talking. I gotta go to school in the morning. <laughs> say, aren't you supposed to say that I say my prayers and make the bed on time and all that kind of stuff? I should say not. I'm just here to take a few notes. No, I'm afraid of Deborah C. Barrett. <coughs> that for always and ever, discipline is a matter you must see to yourself. For always and never, huh? In that case, I hope I die young. This can get very tiring making all my own decisions. Hey, Simon. Be here tomorrow. Well, that little friend is also entirely up to you. And just one little thing, honey. What? Could you get me here in one piece next time? <laughs> in the cafeteria, and then he said that he was on the basketball team as if he had to tell me. And then he asked me what. Humiliating since I'm a song leader and I'm practically jumping into his lap every time he makes a basket and off. <sighs> all what? What do you mean, all what? Well, every time he makes a basket and all. Oh, Solomon, and all is a figure of speech. Oh, I see. I see, like and everything or and stuff, right? Sort of. Sort of what? <laughs> At any rate, you were fascinated by this fellow, but you couldn't quite figure out why, since he really isn't your type, correct? Isn't my type? How do you know I didn't say that? How do you thought? Oh, good grief, Solomon. I might be thinking of it. That doesn't mean I want it written down for all my posterity to read. Well, a thousand pardons, Deborah C. Barrett. Consider it erased. And please continue. All right. Let me. I was really stuck on this only razor, so that I couldn't figure out why, since. Well, since he really isn't my type. What? Continue. Well, it all boils down to this. Daddy says that even though I can date now, I have to be careful about who. Thinks I've got all these guys standing around waiting in line to go out with me, and all I have to do is punch their tickets or something. Oh, I'm really stuck on this on your see, but I'm just afraid Daddy won't approve. I mean. It's just that he's been raised different than me. Differently. Yeah, okay, differently. Solomon, what are you, some kind of a word freak? Yes, I suppose I am. I seem to possess a peculiar fascination for the English language. A passion, you might say. Hmm, well, say, if you think this uh, love affair's gonna last, maybe you could help me with my English grammar test on Friday. All those words are so confusing to me. Expand, expedient, expedite. Oh, yes, marvelous words, all. Oh. All what? Well, all. <laughs> Got you, Solomon. <laughs> Suppose you did. Hey, so what do you think about Arnie Brazier? I mean, he sure is cute. Well, obviously, cute is very important to you, Deborah C. Barrett, so perhaps we should decide on Arnie Brazier. Yeah, I think I've decided on him. <clears throat> Just one thing, though. What's that? Well, do you think he's going to ask me out? <laughs> Standards night, eh? Well, why don't you tell me more about this night of standards, Deborah? Uh, it's where we talk about the standards we live by, you know, the clothes we wear and the language we use and sex and stuff. Sex? And stuff, right. <laughs> Go on, I think. Well, for one thing, this lady who spoke to us said that the whole world is pretty mixed up about the thing. I mean, she said that a lot of people think that virtue and marriage and chastity and all that is ridiculous. I mean, they don't think it matters what you do or who you do it with, because sexual relationships just aren't that important or special, you know? I see. But Solomon. Yes? Well, I was wondering. Hmm? Well, if they don't, if they don't <coughs> think it's so important, 
important. Why do they spend so much time thinking about it? I mean, people write books about it and talk about it and sing stupid songs about it, make movies about it. You know what I think, Solomon? Well, at this point, my dear, I shouldn't be care to imagine. <laughs> Guess Heavenly Father knew what he was doing when he gave it to us. But I wonder if he knows what's going on down here. Everybody running around going crazy. Personally, I don't think they can handle it. So well, perhaps you should inform him, Deborah Seabell. Mm -hmm. At least I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hang in there until I'm married to one special person. I don't know, but I just think sex is a pretty natural thing in its place. I mean, I don't see why everybody's so hung up about it and why they have to read a hundred books that tell them how to do it and everything. What did Adam and Eve do for Pete's sakes? Yeah. I'm sure I have no idea. Figments uh, don't get involved. <laughs> and I'm so sure Mom and Dad can do it. It's got to be pretty easy, don't you think? I don't believe I've ever thought it quite that true. <laughs> Answer period after all the speakers were through at the standards night, you know? But it's a pretty embarrassing to ask questions like that right in front of the bishop and everybody. So nobody asked what they really wanted to know. And um, what was that? How can I know how far I can go before my first date? I think I should know.
did I tell you?
because he came up to me right in front of this whole bunch of kids afterwards, you know, and said really loud, Hey, uh, you're a real turnoff and you're not so hot as you think, you know? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I can't remember, but I mean, I tried to think of something to say that something really cool, you know? What would you have said? Me? Yeah. Well, look, see, we're standing here, this whole bunch of kids after school, and old Stanley just walks up out of the clear blue and says, Hey, Deb, you're a total wipeout, zilch, turn off. What would you say to the thing, eh? Well, I don't know, maybe something like, uh, what would you say to the thing? Stanford. Oh, yeah. Right. Hey, here's some of those words that we had in English grammar today. Yeah, the file, the spur. Asperger. Yeah, I'm right. Use them. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Stan, that is, Mr. Ford. How is it you dare to defile the name of Deborah C. Babbitt? Well, to cast aspersions on the character of such would be to commit slander. Did you know that it was Simon R. Barrett who first landed on Plymouth Rock and everything? Huh? Samuel, <laughs> Samuel P. Barrett was with Benjamin Franklin himself when he first discovered electricity and all. And it was Frederick M. Barrett who single-handedly wiped out an entire platoon of English soldiers crossing the Delaware and stop! I'm trying to reach him on his own level, Deborah. Watch, this is really very, very effective. <coughs> now then, <coughs> buddy boy, <laughs> you're not as hot as you think you are. I mean, any fella that goes around wearing an earring must certainly have something screwy of his own family tree. <laughs> what do you think I should have said something about uh, skeletons in the closet? Eh? Solomon, old Stanford doesn't want to hear all that kind of stuff. He'll just laugh and walk away. I guess that's why I decided not to say all those kind of things. And besides, I kept thinking about what we've been talking about in, in seminary, returning good for evil, you know? And I decided to try an old Stanford to see if it really works. Good, good. What did your empirical studies proffer you, Deborah? Huh? <laughs> well, what did you say and how do you react? <laughs> oh. Well, what I said was, uh, listen, Stanford, you're kind of cute, you know? And I don't exactly want to be on your bad side, so if you'll stop acting like a total idiot, maybe I'll give you a break and let you buy me a lunch in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Uh, how did he, uh, how did he take this bit of a friendly persuasion? Huh? What did he say? 